Hey everyone, it's Jerry at the Fledge. Welcome to another episode of Every Damn Day. Today I have with us our good friend, James Friend. How you doing today, Hi, James? Good, how are you? I'm doing really, really well. I am so happy that you are on the show. Yeah, I'm really glad I've got the, I've, I get to be on here with you. Yeah, so you're going to also talk about uh, your uh, project Art with Friends, but also tell us, I hope, a lot about all your other projects that you got, because I know you're an artist and all of that yourself, too. Mm -hmm. So, um, for those of us who don't know you, um, why don't you tell us something about yourself and tell us something about one or two or three of your projects. Okay, so I I grew up in Midland, but I moved, I've lived in Lansing for um, three years now. And you were one of the first people that I met in this area in Grand Ledge. So that was really good. Um, and I'm really glad I made that connection. Uh, I, I started doing art. People always ask me when I started, and it, it's kind of hard because I, like, I scribbled all the way through high school. And I actually started drawing art and selling it. I sold the first thing that I drew on canvas, and I've been doing that since I was 18. So I guess that's when I started taking my art seriously. And I was really involved with the Flint Public Art Project there, and Art with Friends, which is my project for getting art to kids as much as possible, kind of started naturally there by being at the the Flint Public Art Project events. And I just bring paper and markers for kids to do art with. Yeah. Um, that, you know, first of all, you just opened up a bunch of things I want to ask you about. One, I didn't know that I was one of the first people you met. Um, so oh. that made me feel really warm and good inside. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for that. Uh, I, uh, and then the scribbling part, when you were talking about that, I was thinking about, you know, you were, I actually thought you were going to say I've been scribbling with something since I was one years old or something. Um, but did you mean to imply that your art only started after that period or was that your art too? Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't have, uh, called it art at the time. I was mm. drawing little doodles on everything. So, and I was more into drawing lines to keep my brain busy. I wasn't trying to make pictures. I have a really hard time focusing on things. So mm. when I had to listen to a lecture or an important phone call, I would just draw a line, straight line. And that, that actually helped me a lot when I did start doing things that I call art because I got my line work down really well with my doodling. It, when, as you talk about this, it, I really have to ask you a question. What, what is art? How do you define art? And I, to me, everybody gets their own definition. So what's your definition oh, yeah. of art? Um, anything that I call art. I guess I wouldn't have called it art then. If I did it now, I would call it art or at least like, practice for making art it's it's yeah. whatever i feel is art and expressing emotion in art is really important to me but it might not be to everyone like some people are more interested in the aesthetics and that their art is doesn't have to have emotion I and mean, it's still it's still art yeah what so you have this project called art with friends um why don't you tell us something about that? Um, right now, it was it was it's been called Art with Friends for two years now, and I started doing pop ups at the Allen Neighborhood Center during their farmers market, and also at the Lansing Pride, the Lansing People's Pride, which is also an event that I help with. Um, where again I would just I got together a big bucket of paint and chalk and things anywhere that there would be kids or even adults that would participate and since it was it was it would be so much fun like we'd have everyone painting and and drawing and talking about their art 
And then once COVID hit, I had to kind of change the structure of what I was doing. And I decided everyone's at home and not all of the kids can afford art supplies. So I'll just do my best to get art supplies to them so that they can do this at home. Because, you know, if you can't afford art supplies, you're more likely to have emotional trauma. And I've had a lot of emotional trauma. And one of the ways that I've worked through that is through my art. So I wanted to be able to share that. I, uh, I love that you found a way to keep it going. Uh, I do, I have a sense of what you're talking about because, you know, once in a while we'll go out on the front porch of the fledge and we might have spray paint, we might have uh, chalk, we might have just canvases and paint and when everyone starts just pouring in and doing whatever they want to do and whatever they want to call art, uh, it's always so much fun. And, you know, we we talk a lot about, you know, how our community can be stronger by us entrepreneurs solving problems what what problem and then you you talk about the problem of uh i think you said anxiety but that's not quite what you said what were you saying the trauma emotional trauma um that solving that problem and giving an outlet for that uh as an entrepreneur as a social entrepreneur I'm not sure you even consider yourself that do you I don't know if I do but it's you know people keep calling me that so I'll take it yeah I think that uh you know it's I love seeing you doing what you can to make a living doing art because to me you should be someone that everybody strives to be because you're trying to make a living doing what you love to do. You're not trying to be a billionaire that scales this across the globe and you're going to dominate all of, you know, America or whatever. Why, what, like, why are you doing it? What, what's your motivation? What? Um, you know, I've, I've never wanted to be a, a billionaire or world domination. It's too much too much responsibility or something um i've just i've always had like like i won't call them small dreams they're big dreams for me but i i don't have huge aspirations i want to i want to paint and i want to cook and i want to care about people and i want to share art with people and that's that's really like what my dreams are and I just want to be able to do that better and better going forward I think that uh aspirations are the size of your aspirations I guess are is a mindset that you know I think I think your perspective is super healthy and super uh the right way to look at it because we try to uh you know say world domination and all these things are what we're going to aspire to be and so that these are my big goals but I don't think that's true. I think that, you know, it's the people that are going day by day uh, doing the, what you just said were the little things, but to me are kind of the basics and, you know, a little bit more. And that builds such a strong community. Um, I really love having you in our community. Uh, so what's what's something you do uh, every damn day that, kind of moves your mission forward, whether that be with uh, art with friends or your own art career or whatever else you might want, your holistic view of life? Um, something I try to do every day, I haven't, I haven't gotten, uh, gotten it down quite, I skipped some days. I try to have a checklist so I can, so I'll do all these things anyway, but the checklist really helps me feel like I'm being productive so every morning I sit down and write out my checklist and go through my day checking it off that's something that's really worked for me I know it's not for everyone yeah I do that too I that works for me and there's always that sense of accomplishment of crossing off mm -hmm. even the smallest thing you know yeah yeah I do the same thing I, I like writing checklists I like writing checklists more than I like 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, you sound like you. <laughs> yeah, it's motivation. Like, God, I really don't want to do this, but man, I really want that that check. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. I do. I find that too. I find that so satisfying. So I really look to do something like the simplest thing. And oh yeah, I got a check. Now I can mm-hmm. go take a walk in the garden. <laughs> um, so. Yesterday on the show was Amaru, and Amaru is starting uh, Greenwood District Studios, which is basically a a black and brown run uh, film studio that's going to be on the west side of Lansing, out by the Lansing Mall. And he, yeah, he, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very cool project. But he asked an interesting question. So the the kind of tradition now is to ask the next show. Um, a question and his question to you was how can we help you and nobody has asked that question before it's always been what's your favorite dessert what's uh you know the you know advice of the day or whatever as an entrepreneur but how can we help you so usually you know people get on a show or something and it kind of gets uh self-promoting we sincerely would like to know how can we help you? And that's not even me. That's the guest from yesterday. So oh, that, that that makes me feel like so so the community is so important for this project. So it feels really good to have like that question already there. Um, what can help with art with friends is um, we do we could use donations and. Uh, Monetary donations are usually more helpful than supply donations because when I can buy the art supplies, I can buy them in bulk and I always like quality check all of the art supplies that I give out. I don't want to give these kids like uh, just a really bad first experience with art supplies. Like I think I've talked on 99 Problems about that uh, art kit that they would. Yeah. a lot of kids have gotten as like their first set of art supplies and you're so excited to make some art and you open those markers and it's like scratchy i can feel it in my teeth when i think about it (laughs) um but i have that same phenomenon that happens to me by the way is that (laughs) is this common i I don't talk about my teeth feeling with uh frab cheap fabric like that (laughs) or something <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. So, real quick though, you asked for donations that that would be helpful. What's the best way to deliver a donation for you? Like, is there a website? Is it Facebook? Um, on my Facebook page, I think I put my Venmo link in the description of Art with Friends Facebook page. After I made the Facebook page, I found out there's another thing called Art with Friends that's not in Lansing. So mine's the one with the little um, block printed uh, paintbrush. (laughs) And probably the only one with the Venmo, too, because probably the other one doesn't have a Venmo. So probably pretty safe. Or Mm -hmm. reach out to the Fledge, and we'll make a connection with you as well. Um, Yeah. So we'll figure all this out. So monetary donations are the best. Uh, Would probably take art supplies too, right? Not going to turn those down. I'm not going to turn them down. They're just... Yeah. But keep in mind, we're also not trying to just throw stuff out at kids. We're trying to give them a nice experience to keep them Mm -hmm. motivated. My first experience with music was horrible, and I never did music ever since. Well... Yeah... Except for I sing and I do stuff like that, but I'm not good at music is what I mean. I think I had um, about the same kind of thing happen with, like, with my Spanish class. I had one, like, a melted cassette to learn Spanish off of, and I'm like, I can't learn languages. <laughs> <laughs> because of a melted cassette? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Tomorrow, uh, Britt House from B House uh, Designs is on this on the show, and like uh, Amaru had the chance to ask you a question. What would you like to ask Britt? Um, I'd like to ask, what are you doing to avoid burnout? 
because uh, I know as entrepreneurs, the the culture tends to be like hustle, hustle, and nobody talks about how you if you keep pushing and pushing, you're going to burn out and you won't be giving your best because you weren't able to take care of yourself. Yeah, I like that question a lot. Um, and I, yeah, I'm going to be curious because uh, I know he's got a couple jobs and all of that. So I'm curious what his answer is going to be. But I'm also curious what your answer is going to be. So what do you, what do, you uh, do to kind of combat that uh, potential burnout? Um, I sit down, I have to, I tend to take on more than I can actually do. So I've tried to take the practice of looking at what I'm planning to do and being like, am I actually able to do this? And if, am I able to do this alone? Do I need to ask for help? Do I need to reschedule this or figure out a different way to go about this that I can do? And I try to have um, a really clear right between my work and my life, which is kind of hard sometimes because uh, I'm not going to show you because it's a mess, but this is my bedroom and my studio is the other half of my bedroom. So it's there's not a physical barrier between my work and my life, but I try to keep a mental barrier there. Okay. Um, we Before the show, we prepped a little bit and we were talking about you know, I I even heard in your when you were saying the word entrepreneur a minute ago, you kind of almost paused, and then earlier you said people keep telling you that you're an entrepreneur, but you don't know if you are. Uh, I think that word entrepreneur has some stigma with it, especially like in uh, when when we go to fight for social justice, or when we're in when we're in art, or when we're in things that are um, uh, more noble, I guess, than just being a consumer or a producer. Um, what, what do you think about like the being an entrepreneur and all of that? What's your, what's your thoughts on that? I do think there's a stigma because when I, when I think about it, my immediate thought is like about rich people starting little apps and doing <laughs> research with the, the whole plan of getting the company big enough to sell to a bigger company, and that's what they plan to do with it. So uh, that that's what I immediately think of when I hear the word entrepreneur, which is why I'm kind of like, mm -hmm. but uh, I do think that I, I am an entrepreneur, and I I know that being an entrepreneur isn't isn't like a, a dirty thing. It's like I'm trying to grow this. I'm trying to grow this like from the ground up, which is basically what what I think being an entrepreneur really is. I um I I like that you're saying that and I kinda you know, I get that vibe a lot when we talk you know, the fledge is one thing when you're like here in the vibe and we're doing a bunch of creative stuff and it's fun. It's a different thing when we start talking about entrepreneurialism. And I'm, I'm trying to get to actually the play the playlist on our YouTube channel um, because I, I put a definition in there and I'm just going to find it right now because I'd like to read it and see what you think. Okay. Um, so... To us, an entrepreneur is someone who takes what resources they have and uses innovation and creativity to generate more resources. That could be tools, knowledge, materials, etc. To solve the problems facing the community, often finding a way for the community to agree on how to fund the solution. That could be sales or donations, grants, loans, whatever. To us, an entrepreneur builds their own future and refuses to buy it. So from my definition of an entrepreneur, you seem like the ideal entrepreneur. You're not the capitalist pig. You're not the, uh, you know, trying to scale up and sell. You're helping us solve community problems. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Do you think that? I, I do. I like that. I like that a lot. 
was the definition good? Oh, yeah. Yeah, good job I've, on that. I've never read it out loud. Well, I might have one time, <laughs> uh, but on maybe on a scrum or something. But I like that definition I, because it takes that capitalism that, especially the capitalism without a moral compass, uh, kind of out of the equation because it's not... It's not the Jeff Bezos and the Amazons that are going to save the world. It's the James Friends and Art with Friends that are going to solve the small problems that build up. And in the right mindset, these are the big problems that are being solved. So I'm really proud to know you. And I'm really proud you said I was one of the first people you met. So. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so. I'm glad that I met you. Um, do you mind if I, if I talk about a, the program that's going on with Art with Friends? I was um, just going to ask you whatever you want to talk about. Let's talk about oh, So, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, one of the other things that I could use help with, I didn't think about this when you'd ask that question, is uh, I'm having a really hard time with outreach. Like, I, I have all of these art supplies. I'm having a much harder time finding people to give them to. Um, because before, when there was, like, live events and stuff, I could go find the people and give it to them, and now I'm trying to <clears throat> get the word out about things, and it's a lot harder than I expected, so I'm still learning how to do that, but Art with Friends just started a, a birthday present program, and so anyone who lives in Lansing and has a kid who's, like, up to turning 18 can message art with friends and we'll get them a birthday present together for, for free okay um, and also i wanted to to make sure that my my personal art page gets shared so that people can see the kind of things that i also do tell me what it is i'll type it up it, and put it on the screen it's james friend art and i'm also on instagram as half gallon of water So, James Friend Art on Facebook and uh, Half Gallon Water. Half of Gallon water. of <laughs> Water on Instagram. I know we're friends on both or connected on both. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure it's right and then we'll leave it up there. And, and all of this will be put down in the, the description. So, does it look okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So James Friend Art on Facebook and Half Gallon of Water on Instagram. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. What do you think? That's, um, that's my personal art. Yeah. Um, and you won't be disappointed in following both of uh, both the Facebook and the Instagram. I like your <laughs> Instagram account a lot. <laughs> so. I've been. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, so, uh, anything else you want to say? Um, no, I think that's, that's about all I got today. Um, just right. thank you so much for doing this and thank you so much for having me on. Well, we're super happy that you're on. We're super happy that you came here three years ago from Midland. Sorry to Midland for losing you and <laughs> what you're doing for the community. Um, but yeah. And everyone out there, please subscribe to the Fledges YouTube channel for views of 99 Problems But a Pitch Ain't One, which is showing, again, not tomorrow, but a week from Sunday. And then Every Damn Day airs every damn day at 2 p.m. So uh, check us out. Donate to James uh, with Friends, uh, or Art with Friends on uh, Facebook. Find that Venmo. Check out James's uh, personal page on Instagram with the half gallon of water and James Friend Art. You want to say peace out or something at least, James? Peace. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, James. You're doing a great job. <laughs>